Welcome to CNU, the video series that will teach you everything you need to know to provide excellent nutrition care. In this video, I'm going to compare and contrast peripheral and central parenteral nutrition. By the end of the video, you should be able to understand the difference between peripheral venous access and central venous access, and know the advantages and disadvantages of peripheral and central parenteral nutrition. If you find this video helpful, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Let's get started. Within parenteral nutrition as an intervention, there are two major forms of treatment. They are peripheral parenteral nutrition, or PPN, and central parenteral nutrition, also known as CPN. CPN has long been used interchangeably with TPN, or total parenteral nutrition. In my lectures, I will continue to use CPN instead of TPN as it is more specific to the intervention and appears to be the prevailing term in newer textbooks and other publications. The major difference between PPN and CPN is with the type of vascular access device that is used to deliver nutrients. PPN is infused into a small vein through a peripheral venous catheter. That vein is usually located on the forearm or the back of the hand. CPN is administered into a large vein through a central venous catheter. Common insertion points for CPN include the internal jugular vein and the subclavian vein, with the end positioned close to the heart in the distal third of the superior vena cava. An important consideration here is that access is determined by where the end of the catheter is positioned, not by the initial point of entry. You should know this because there are a few vascular access devices that can be a little tricky. One is the peripherally inserted central catheter, or PIC, which is often used for CPN. As the name suggests, it is inserted peripherally but provides access to a large vein. Another one is the midline catheter, which is inserted a little higher on the arm than other traditional peripheral lines. This one is often confused for a central venous catheter, but it only provides access to a small vein. Knowing whether your patient already has peripheral or central venous access, or whether you want to pursue a peripheral or central venous catheter to begin parenteral nutrition is essential to providing the appropriate care. This is because peripheral and central catheters have unique characteristics that offer distinct advantages and disadvantages. Let's take a look at those. Peripheral catheters are generally easier to place, and because of this, more clinicians are trained to place them. This includes all doctors, physician assistants, and registered nurses. It is helpful because if it is decided that parenteral nutrition will be administered, the IV can usually be inserted quickly and the infusion can start shortly afterward. Nevertheless, these catheters do raise a few concerns. For one, they are prone to causing both phlebitis and extravasation of a parenteral nutrition solution, which can produce a burning sensation and pain, and with extravasation, there is potential for skin and tissue damage. A second concern with peripheral catheters is that they are easy to dislodge, difficult to maintain for long periods, and may require routine replacement as a strategy to reduce risk for infection. This is rooted in a standing recommendation from the CDC to replace peripheral IVs every 72 to 96 hours, which some medical institutions still follow. However, there is emerging evidence that lines can be changed only when there is a sign of irritation or malfunction. Regardless, the overall lack of reliability can lead to undesirable delays in feeding while also contributing to pain, discomfort, and frustration for the patient. Compared to a peripheral IV, a central venous catheter is more difficult to place, and because of this, 
fewer clinicians are trained to place them. This can lead to an undesirable delay in feeding because a clinician who can place one may not always be available when you need them to be. Another aspect to consider with a central venous catheter is that the risk of the procedure is higher. Error with placement can lead to the inadvertent puncture of an artery or a pneumothorax, both of which can have devastating consequences. To reduce this risk, Central venous catheters are usually placed under the guidance of ultrasound, and then placement is confirmed with an x-ray. Despite these challenges, central venous catheters avoid some of the major disadvantages of peripheral IVs. For one, patients who receive parenteral nutrition through a central line will be less prone to phlebitis and extravasation of the solution. Central catheters are also more durable and easier to maintain and can be kept in place for months to years without routine replacement. Since peripheral catheters are easy to dislodge and more difficult to maintain, PPN is only recommended for a short-term infusion. If a patient is going to require a long-term infusion, they should absolutely receive CPN. As a general rule of thumb, PPN can be considered if the length of infusion is less than two weeks, and CPN should be used if the infusion is expected to last for more than two weeks. This doesn't mean that CPN cannot be used for infusions lasting less than two weeks. It is just to point out that once the two-week mark approaches, it is strongly encouraged. If the amount of time the patient will require parenteral nutrition is unclear, or there is an inability to have a central catheter placed in a timely manner, patients can be started on PPN and it can be transitioned to CPN at a later time. When used in this way, you will hear PPN being called a bridge to CPN. As it pertains to the risk for phlebitis and extravasation, this difference can have significant implications for the ability to provide adequate nutrition. The primary reason peripheral catheters carry an increased risk for these complications is because the peripheral veins have a limit to the osmolarity they can tolerate. As a reminder from your favorite chemistry class, osmolarity is a measure of concentration for solutions like parenteral nutrition. It is defined by the amount of solute per liter of solution. The solutes that add the most to the osmolarity of a parenteral nutrition solution are dextrose, amino acids, and electrolytes. So, when you add these nutrients to the solution, the osmolarity goes up. Once that osmolarity goes above 900 milliosmol per liter, you increase the likelihood of irritation, inflammation, and the potential for a collapsed vein, extravasation, and loss of IV access. For obvious reasons, going above this value should be avoided whenever an order for PPN is placed. Fortunately, the superior vena cava does not suffer from this limitation. Because of its large diameter and high volume blood flow, even a parenteral nutrition solution with an osmolarity above 1000 is rapidly diluted without issue. This limitation in osmolarity with PPN can make it difficult to meet the nutritional demands of the patient. At the point that maximum osmolarity is exceeded, you must dilute the solution by either increasing the volume or removing nutrients from the bag. Such a predicament can easily lead to excessive fluid administration or underfeeding, neither of which you want. In order to satisfy 100% of the estimated nutritional demands with PPN, the patient usually needs to be able to tolerate a large volume of fluid, anywhere from 2.5 to 3 liters per day. It is for this reason that PPN should be avoided in patients who require a fluid restriction. 
Common populations with this need include those with heart failure, end-stage kidney disease, and or end-stage liver disease. Sometimes these conditions require a restriction to 1.5 liters of fluid per day or less. It can also be quite difficult to provide PPN to patients with high nutrient needs, such as the critically ill and those with increased needs for wound healing. This includes those recovering from major surgery or burns and patients with pressure injuries. Once again, CPN bypasses this obstacle. Since CPN allows for a more concentrated solution, meaning you can squeeze a lot of nutrients into a small volume, it is easier and safer to meet 100% of the estimated nutritional demands in a wide range of patient populations. Here is a summary for this lesson. Within parenteral nutrition as an intervention, there are two major forms of treatment. They are peripheral parenteral nutrition, or PPN, and central parenteral nutrition, also known as CPN. The major difference between PPN and CPN is with the type of vascular access device that is used to deliver nutrients. PPN is infused into a small vein that is usually located on the forearm or the back of the hand. CPN is infused into a large vein with the end position close to the heart in the distal third of the superior vena cava. A major difference between peripheral and central venous catheters is that peripheral catheters are easy to dislodge and difficult to maintain whereas central catheters are more durable and easier to maintain for long periods. This is one reason why PPN is recommended for infusions lasting for less than two weeks, while CPN is recommended for all infusions lasting for more than two weeks. If it is initially unclear how long parenteral nutrition will be needed, a patient can be started on PPN which can serve as a bridge to CPN at a later time. Another difference between peripheral and central venous catheters is that peripheral catheters are more prone to complications like parenteral nutrition-induced phlebitis and extravasation. The primary reason for this is that a peripheral vein can only withstand a certain amount of osmolarity, or concentration for a solution. That level is somewhere near 900 milliosmoles per liter, and so it is recommended that a PPN solution does not exceed this value. Since nutrients like dextrose, amino acids, and electrolytes contribute to the osmolarity, this limitation makes it difficult to meet the nutritional demands with PPN. This is particularly true if the patient has a fluid restriction and or high nutrient needs. Fortunately, CPN bypasses this issue. The high volume blood flow of a large vein rapidly dilutes the parenteral nutrition solution without issue, even at an osmolarity greater than 1000, making it easier and safer to satisfy the estimated nutritional demands. Overall, the ability to squeeze a lot of nutrients into a small volume, paired with a lower concern for phlebitis and extravasation, makes CPN the more desirable option across a wide range of patient populations. Thank you for watching. Check out these videos for more content just like this.